Hello and welcome for all those who are listening to this conversation as against watching it. I'm with the four directors of Made in Heaven season two, the Emmy award nominated, the Emmy nominated show, of which was the first season. Of course, and the second season has uh, quite rightly become a conversation starter, which is the point of most things that you put out in public space anyway. So congratulations, all of you, uh, for Emmy at season two. Zoe Akhtar, Alankita Shrivastav, Rima Kagdi, Neeraj Gewan. I know it's a very common practice uh, to have multiple directors in TV shows anyway, but I'm just curious about the process. How does this really work out when there are that many directors, but the show needs to be seamless in terms of you can feel you have a Bible, you have a rule book, you, are there things that you say to each other that you will not cross? We basically, uh, uh, me, Alankrita and Reema write the show. So uh, we are uh, we we are in on that process. Nitya Mehra uh, was uh, the director on the first season and showrun on the first season, and she's continued with us. Uh, Neeraj was the new entry, the wild card on this uh, season with us. But uh, the show is so mammoth. Uh, it, that it's it's close to impossible for one or two people to do it in a scheduled amount of days and time because we have multiple arcs playing out in our lead characters and then each episode has a new families coming in so that's new casting new direct I mean a new uh, locations new 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 so it's impossible for one director and DP to continue that like if I'm shooting something and if mm -hmm. I have to go and pick a location for episode three, I'm not going to be able to do it. This is going to take, it'll be two years to shoot it. Mm. So it makes sense to give episodes to directors to do. I'm talking mainly on a production level. Yeah. But once we come in and you obviously have to work with people that are aligned with you in terms of the uh, uh, which side of the fence they're on, what the value system is, how they view the characters, how they view the show, you know. So once you're politically aligned in that sense on that uh, and on women and uh, uh, women's equality, women's rights, when you're aligned on that, then it becomes quite easy uh, to tell the story. We have certain visual rules uh, that yeah. discuss Bible rules. We do all the readings together. We do all uh, the, this big decisions together. Uh, casting decisions together. Uh, we go through all the scripts together. So all the arcs, all the character arcs are uh, uh, known to us. We all know all the beats. And uh, then the actors are so wonderful that they just take it. No matter who's directing, they know who their character is. So it's not so hard. Right. So, I mean, in terms of, of course, each episode is credit to a director, but you would, then, because there is also a larger arc, would there be situations where there's interlapping because you have this location that you're going to use in episode two and then probably use in episode uh, five as well. So you may as well shoot that uh, instead of bring a new director in. So there's, there's a bit of that happening as well. A lot of that. Right. Yeah, we've all shot each other's episodes. We've yeah. shot yes. all of us. Nitya, all of us have shot for each other. Yeah, but we've also had many days, uh, Mayank, where, uh, you know, where the four of us are actually all shooting on the same day. So it's like hmm. somebody shot for two hours and I'm like, okay, when Zoya finishes, then Neeraj will shoot, then Neeraj finishes, I'll go. So we have... A, Lots and lots of days like that, which is actually a lot of fun, con you know, uh, contrary to what people feel, it must be like very chaotic. Those days are actually a lot of fun. A lot of fun. Yeah, because yeah, we're all hanging out. I think a joke about that because every time I would be ended up, I would end up shooting the last person and uh, Alankrita would be shooting ahead of me. <laughs> and it would take a lot of time. And every time I know how they schedule it that I'm the last person. Jackie <laughs> Shaw from Border, who's waiting. So <laughs> I, I was just thinking that I was completely like, Zanki, get it done with. Like, so that was. Yeah, but that's, say, that's I, because you're the wild card entry. I did right? have a day change the schedule. <laughs> Remember when we were shooting Tarakaran's house? Lanki was supposed yeah. to be for me, and I was like, no, 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 I gotta go before. <laughs> Otherwise, she's going to eat up my hours. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> How do you guys decide who's going to direct which episode? I'm presuming that happened after the writing process. People just pick what they want. You know what I mean? Mm. Like, uh, I'm not picky. Mm. Like, for me, I'll go with whatever, you know. Uh, I think all of us swapped our choices at one point also. So that clued in our together that I think I swapped with Lanky. I think uh, Zoe, you swapped with someone. Like this, but there was something there, I guess. No, I think the uh, finale, which became the finale episode, was supposed to be earlier. And uh, I think Nitya was doing it. Then when it became the finale, I said, I'll go back to it. Something like that. But I'm not uh, picky in that way. Like I'm, I think I've I've always been doing something else when Made in Heaven is being shot. Like season one, I was shooting Gold. When we were doing uh, season two, I was also shooting uh, Dahar. 
And uh, for me, it really wasn't about choosing. It was about as much as I could wrestle away from Zoya. On air. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and and make a trip to Nice as well along yeah. the way. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Because we only had that many days in France, uh, budget-wise, so it wasn't possible for one director to finish all that work. It right. needed to be two directors. Uh, so it made perfect sense to just divvy up the episode. And uh, she had one DP, I had one DP, and we just shot it. And uh, we just banged it out, yeah. Right. Okay, uh, coming back to the point of the series, I mean, would you think that, like, say, diversity and representation, that's really at the spine of what you're trying to do with the show? Uh, and it comes through episode after episode. Would that be, if you were to, like, just, I mean, obviously, that's not a one-liner, but if you were to explain the point of it, uh, besides, of course, you know, looking at the whole idea of marriage and, and, and you know, it is about very planners, of course. I mean, that's a plot. That's a plot part of it. But as a purpose, is diversity and representation what you're, you're trying try to express through the series? This part of it, uh, it's such a mammoth show, and we're trying to do so many things with it that it's difficult to answer your question. Oh, like for me, uh, honestly, I think when the crux of this started, and um, I think diversity and representation in this show is a uh, uh, par for course. Uh, because of the plot and the storylines and what where, where it's set so right. that's that's just going to happen you know right. uh, i think uh for me the story is actually tara and karan and their love story mm -hmm. and i think it's uh made in heaven sometimes is not finding a partner in the conventional uh sense of the term mm -hmm. uh you know your soulmate can be somebody that you're not married to Mm -hmm. uh, or will ever be married to or have an intimate, uh, so that kind of man-woman relationship with. Right. Uh, uh, so uh, I think that to me is the show, you know, right. where these two broken people come in and how they fit together and are each other's soulmate and made in mm -hmm. heaven. Uh, mm -hmm. And the rest of it is uh, par for the course because it's about weddings, it's about uh, uh, sexuality, it's about uh, being out there. So it that's just part of it you know so so that particular scene when uh, both of them are cuddling and you know they're going through their lowest phase in their own ways would that be then the point of the show to me personally yeah but everyone takes what works right. for them that's the point of it you know and that's the beauty of it so for me i think it's tara and karan what about you alakrita what do you think is the point of the show you know for me i think it's about um insiders and outsiders i think mm -hmm. it's about people trying to to feel like they belong. And I feel that's kind of there in almost all of the characters. And it sort of even for me, I think like it works its, it's way in, in, even into like the wedding stories. But it's basically, you know, like, what do you have to do to feel like you belong? What do you have to feel like you are on the inside? Oh, you're from the outside and it can be metaphorical. It can actually be geographical. It can be financial. It can be social. It can be uh, to do with, you know, with anything. But what do you have to do to feel like you, you belong. belong here? And I think for me, it's also reflective of the city of Delhi, this outsider, mm -hmm. insider, and how do you get that feeling of belonging? So for me, I think it, it often boils down to that. And I think the other point, it, it um, I think the core for me of, of the show is about loneliness at the heart of human beings mm. and I feel like somewhere we have been able to and I think have attempted to maybe subconsciously sometimes consciously to sort of look at who we really are as people and I think you know sometimes and, and I think like dignify that sense of loneliness and aloneness also so I think that's also beautiful I don't know like purely as a very very distant observer to what you guys have done I mean, I, it seemed like a checklist to me. Like I'm going through like okay, episode one, colorism, episode two, domestic abuse, domestic violence, episode three, role of money in relationships, episode four, celebrity wedding, episode five, cast is how central it is to Indian weddings, episode six, polygamy, episode seven, age. Is that a conscious thing, Rima? Like yes. did you when in your writing process say, okay, this, uh, we're gonna deal deal with this subject? Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, I think I think uh women's empowerment is at the base of uh, what we try to do and it's also I mean it's just trying to examine a situation uh, not I mean challenge conventions maybe mm. where you know there's a lot of irony in uh, all around us and if you see the uh, I mean more than this kind of a checklist if you look at the base of the show which is two wedding planners I mean when we go back to season one two wedding planners creating these beautiful weddings one is going through the uh, divorce and the other one cannot legally be married you know mm. 
so uh, it's uh, it's not about checklisting evils in our society i mean i hmm. it's feeling a very reductionist <laughs> way of looking no, but at it's it. also drama na you can't have a wedding where nothing goes it's wrong and drama. everyone's happy and who's yeah. interested it it's so boring yeah. like say for example uh, you know it's I, i'm i'm just saying the the older couple who run away hmm. i'm you know what what, what uh, did you make of that the checklist i'm just curious oh uh, no i i i'm just making a rhetorical point i wasn't really making a checklist so i'm saying that then they are I, you know you know what i made of that is uh, that don't really in that sense check it yeah the point but I'm maybe saying. age yeah no not even well yeah but unrecorded love no i think we, we what, what i found is we actually read about it in the papers and we thought it was so fun which one uh, older couple the in-laws running away no really Yes. yes, it's from a news report. Yes, the in-laws running away, the girl marrying herself. All these are news. These are things we file from the newspaper. That is amazing. Yeah, that is amazing. All the report. There is, uh, as writers, Zoe and I tend to do that all the time, and definitely Lanky Zoe and I for Made in Heaven, we've always drawn from reality, and I think that that's why people connect to it because there you do arrive at something that has a little bit of. authenticity in that sense speaking of reality and i think uh, i mean amnira of course you directed the episode uh the one that we are talking about i mean i'm looking at these people neelam uh, samir soni uh, sanjay kapoor thinking did you just cast them from that bollywood wives reality show like directly from there zoya you want to talk about the casting <laughs> yeah because that's you know it. what we were casting for neeraj's episode and we were testing people and testing people and testing people and he uh, wasn't uh, he wasn't really happy and i met them at a dinner and mm. i called neeraj <laughs> the next day and i was like i i, I thought neeraj is going to uh, be like what what's going on with you uh, so i called him and i said listen what do you think of neelam samir and sanjay because sanjay is just delicious you know i've worked mm. with sanjay before in luck by chance he's a very dear friend of mine and i know that he could really have fun with this part and neeraj was like that sounds interesting but would they be interested in a show like this i was like we don't know we'll ask so we narrated it to them and they just mm. jumped on and i mean i think it just went really well it just i mean they, i was at a dinner and right. they hadn't even done their second episode after that i shot with uh, them for bollywood wives yeah well that happens in the show itself right that yeah. she actually yeah. comes to meet you and sort of yeah, yeah, yeah. career uh, before that she had been cast yeah the other thing of course is whenever you look at uh, issues which are um, contentious by nature and i think all films and series so in any case there is always a a backlash in some form or the other right and i mean and i'm sure you address some of them online i've noticed on social media uh, and then there is more and that's just what makes it a conversation starter anyway like for instance the first episode you know i just read some piece uh, a think piece on how the lead in that show which is the, you know battling uh, colorism in so I'm not saying racism because we're all the same race we just yeah. seem to have issues with exactly how fair within the same brown that we are uh, that she was not dark enough and was that was that deliberate because you don't even need to be dark uh, enough no that was not deliberate you know when people they just write things like why did you cast a really dark person for the show because that's not the only uh, aspect of that character that uh, is needed to play a whole role mm. the age has to be correct the person has to be able to act the person has to be able to have a certain amount of uh, 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 chemistry with the co-actor this uh, has to there, there are many things that have to uh, uh, boxes that have to be checked you don't just cast a role based on one thing you know uh, yeah. so from uh, uh, i'm speaking now for nitya uh, mm. because she was part of this casting process it's her episode we went through so many so many so many so many uh, people and um, uh, she was uh, she fit the best you know zenmari mm. fit the best and we have to go with the person uh, that fits the role the best as opposed to just taking one aspect and sticking with that you know instead of having having somebody who was much darker skin than her to make a point but wasn't a good enough actor right. we didn't think it would work you know, know because then mari in a normal uh, it, it, the way she is in the show and looks in the show uh, to most people in our society wouldn't be considered fair right so i don't know why they are taking umbrage to this i mean it's fun i mean it's fun to yeah, read that but response. i mean we yeah. cast the best but person I, for the part yeah i am what i feel honestly you know uh, uh, having uh, lived in delhi 
I actually feel that Zen's casting has worked out really well because you know somebody else could be like she's not that dark, for instance. But the judgment in a city like Delhi can be so harsh that you're like you know so many people feel that pressure of wanting to be fairer because like what Rima said, no matter how fair you are, it's never fair enough. So I think somehow I feel like the casting actually worked out very beautifully, also. And also, yeah. I have to say that a lot of people that came in to test, I mean, I don't know if I should be saying this, had light in their skin. Like that was the <laughs> you were like, we are meeting young people and young people and people are lightening their skin. So I mean, yeah. Did you did you think Salman Khan in your head when you were getting Sarfaraz? I mean, it looks a bit like him um, uh, on screen. Of course, he's not married. So that's yeah. the irony of it, anyway. And then the other, the person he's getting married to has a bit of a Katrina Kaif vibe uh, going on. Did, was that conscious? No, I mean, see, you we were. got Sarfraz back because he got a lot of love in season one, and yeah. when we decided to do this. We were like, we should get Sarfraz back. You know, oh, and Ulkit is really fun, and he's a really good actor, and he's great fun to work with. And I directed the episode in season one with him, and I had a blast. And uh, uh, People really liked him in the show. And, uh, you know, with a lot of shows, there are recurring characters. And we just thought that, like, when the writing room, that we should get him back and get him married, you know. Mm. Uh, but we weren't really thinking about Salman and Katrina. <laughs> but uh, you are, and I guess that's how, you know, art works, I suppose. Yeah. You can interpret it how you like. Yeah, yeah 100%. Looked exactly like Salman Khan to me. <laughs> uh, which, of course, brings me to uh, the episode that everyone's been talking about and you know it, it worked out really well for you guys because it's really opened up a conversation online for sure uh you know that's the fifth episode which deals with a very important issue which is caste of course and how central caste is to in the indian marriage market as it were the matrimonial ads the stuff that people say and quite openly it's not even considered caste is considered part of uh, all of you just take me through that episode the where it started from the process behind it what was, you know, what is it that you wanted to say? Neeraj, you've been credited for additional story. Was that the additional story that you've been credited for in, in the show? How it started was the writers had an idea of where, where they wanted to go. Uh, Alankrita, Rima and Zoya, when they met me, they had an initial idea of talking about a accomplished, a marginalized person, say a Dalit, hmm. who has got a lot of uh, love in the world, who's got a lot of fame and recognition and awards internationally but still not insulated from the clutches of caste, which is also harking back to Ambedkar. I mean, this man uh, is the most well-read person in our country. And when he came back after his education, he was expecting a lot of garlands, a lot of praise, a lot of everybody welcoming him home. But he was thrown out of the lodge that he was staying. And that's when it hit him that no matter what you do, the inter intergenerational trauma is not going to leave you. So in that space, when I came in, I suddenly uh, I I opened up out opened up about uh, me proclaiming my identity on Twitter mm. because of this small thing that happened way back. Mm. And somehow I ended up talking about my entire life story to them. Like I haven't even spoken to my therapist as much as I've spoken to these three women and all the writer teams. I so I poured a lot of myself in it, and it was I'm telling I'm still so scared because it is so scary to put something that you have been, you've grown your entire living years being afraid of, being hiding away from the world and suddenly to put yourself out there on a show that is going to 300, 200 countries, it was extremely scary. For instance, like when she talks about uh, the Kumar and how I've gone back to my last name, that's me. So for the longest time I've had Kumar because as soon as you tell them the full, full name, there's this last name scrutiny that is, I mean, endemic in our country where everybody asks, feels the need to ask, and then the scrutiny begins. Ki, achha, where is your last name from? Where are your parents from? What what location? Mm. Achha, so what caste are you? Which gotra are you? What are you? And it is scarring, genuinely scarring, you know. And to like in my passport is I still have Kumar. Okay, so but I've I've reclaimed my name as Gai Gaiwan for I mean it's been five years now since I do that. That and also. Uh, the point about like when I did this on Twitter, when I proclaimed my identity and a lot of press picked up. But the thing that happened was my extended family members, some of most of them were like hiding. They were not proclaiming it. They were not owning up fully. They were in fact masquerading some of them. 
and they felt miffed that you know you have put us out there because it's in the press and everybody knows you're our relative so mm-hmm. it's like so that complexity is what we drew upon for the brothers track where he's also right it's like like you don't live in india we you live in new york and we live through this reality every day so those complexities and also this 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 thing that i feel constantly weighed down upon like being the only acclaimed uh, acknowledged uh, person i'm not even say director but acknowledged artist in the whole of hindi film industry where you have 25% of the population i'm literally the only one the weight is too much for me to carry and i have those misgivings i have those doubts about myself that i'm also an artist and i want to be say, telling a lot of other stories but i i'm always pulled in every panel discussion they only talk to me about caste like even now the only episode that they want to talk more about me is episode 5 so i'm constantly conflicted so i even i have those self doubts so that reflected in pallavi also having that cold feet before the marriage she's saying that you know i'm doing all of this but am i right am i pushing too far so those questions are so real that happened to me so then all of that going out there because i'm also scared how my parents are going to react because have i put myself too much out there for them for them to like you know in their society in their uh, building and everything how it's going to be but there has been this like so much love and i genuinely telling you like i did not expect people crying i expected love and happiness and celebration but people calling and crying to me that this is the first time in centuries that we felt seen heard in a very grand way that we exist and our beauty is beauty and it's it's not something that is always seen in a in a very atrocity porn way or in a, in a in a in a you know it's never seen in an assertion uh, angle it's ne- it's always seen from a privileged caste white male savior kind of complex but it's never shown from intrinsically so that genuinely i'm telling you it is a moment of catharsis for me because to be acknowledged on the screen it is mm. too much to take so in many ways Pal- pallavi menke is you i mean and i and i thought that while watching the show as well because you were you yeah. know you owned up your dalit identity in public and this i mean we all distinctly remember that a few years back yeah. so that's that's really in some ways as you yeah it is i i i don't know so i'm really emo but it's very difficult you know like it's very difficult to like really <laughs> I uh, I mean I put myself out there and I thought that I was scared that will I be judged will I be like uh will my family get affected will my nieces like sort of unfollow me on Instagram or something like that but seeing this love that you feel you feel like okay finally your demons are like vanquished and you know you you feel like you're exercising yourself it, it, that's why it's a little over I mean right now for me sorry sorry No, no, it's not Neeraj. Please, like we we spent enough time with him, and in terms of what he said, like we we spent a whole day just talking, asking questions, learning, um, uh, being honestly really astonished by the experiences he's had. Uh, a lot of the microaggressions that he's mentioned are in the episode. There's there's yes, there's it's him. You know, yeah. There's obviously the one. Um, person um that you know, obviously all people are aware of uh, yashika dat who who came out saying that she felt invisibilized because it seemed to her that this character was sort of inspired by her this elements of the character were inspired by her and that she did not get formally credited of course neeraj you've written about it on your instagram post uh, thereafter what did you make of that did, did she get in touch with you directly did you get in touch with her thereafter what did you make of what what she said and it also opens up a larger thing about being in, you know having elements of someone else's life into characters that's very very common how does one deal with with it going ahead anyway what is what did you make of that uh, well we answered this already i think in our statement right. you know yes yeah. right. uh yeah art is subjective you know because art is reflecting reality and if it won't then it is going to be hollow like would you go and tell true for that all the influences that you've shown all the postmodern kitsch that you've shown uh why haven't you attributed you know because a lot of things come from reality so i think that way like you have to see from that lens of art and also like whatever we wanted to say we have said it yeah no there. absolutely sure i mean there are obviously there are enough characters otherwise also also in the show that seem like real real people i mean people that you met like for instance that your uh, the the shashank uh, shashank's role i mean is that someone who worked with you in your office he seemed he seemed like a Uh, a guy i've met uh, but it, uh, but so many guys have met he's an amalgamation of all of us 
is okay. an amalgamation of everybody that sits back observes uh, uh is a keen observer uh is sensitive is open but at the same time the way he's been brought up the class he's been brought up in he's mm-hmm. got the whole trappings of that class which he himself can't take out and jazz calls him out on it mm-hmm. but at the same time it's also like we i have we have, i have a very close friend uh vishal punjabi he is uh, the wedding filmer it's a huge company yeah and uh, uh yeah he's the person we interviewed you know uh, mainly uh, for him so there are uh, certain uh, one or two attributes that came from vishal in there yeah are Every, there any others you can yeah. think of who are like real people uh, or at least friends or people you've known uh, and they sort of just made it as characters into the show you know my uncle none of the people here on this panel uh, make uh, uh, stories that are uh, that are in the air yeah we mm. are all our stories however commercial they are are rooted in some truth you know and when you do that your influences come from your own personal lives your families people in public domain literature uh the uh, news the political zaka it comes from everywhere influence that's what in, uh, and your heroes your filmmakers the people you admire so i mean none of uh, our work is rooted in something which is why it resonates i mean otherwise uh, i mean that's the whole that's fiction that's how you create fiction right otherwise you tell us we make nonsense yeah and drawing inspiration from reality it kind of it's also a tool for better writing let's just put it that way i mean uh, both you and uh, zoya and reema i mean incredible the the output uh, you know it's how much stuff you're putting out there uh, like this almost a back to back that the hard just came what a uh, barely a month ago right uh, uh, is that one of the reasons why made in heaven 2 took longer than it probably does in terms of sequels or usually they're not the season 2 doesn't come out that much far ahead uh, in time No, it I mean, was the yeah, pandemic. Yeah, it was the pandemic, but also, yeah, we are like a boutique uh, house. You know, we we we're not churning stuff out, and either Zoya and me are personally involved in every project, and uh, that kind of thing does take time. But uh, at the end of it, I think it's uh, we didn't plan a release every two months. It, that that uh, everything just pandemic. came together because yeah. of the pandemic. Everything just happened together. Also, uh, Made in Heaven was a tricky beast because we shut down, but then when they opened up. Uh, they said you can shoot, but you can't have more than fifty people on a set, which is not happening for Made in Heaven. I mean, look at the show. So we just couldn't yeah. shoot for the longest time. It was uh, it was tricky the show, but uh, yeah, we are working very hard, and we <laughs> need a break. You're not a boutique production house anymore. I have to say, given your slate. Uh, no, we are boutique. We are very we are boutique. boutique. What do you mean? We are overworked boutique. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Rima, Alakrita, Zoya, Niraj. Thank this you, was, Maya. This is amazing content and an amazing show. Thank you so much. Thank yes. you. Subscribe to Midday India. Get direct notifications on all our videos by clicking on the bell icon.